We thought that to try and make um, a particular difference, we should try and come at it from left field. So this is what today is about. It's about trying to get a step change in how we think about tackling deprivation. Not just working with the big chunky organisations, but working with everybody who deals with and works with deprivation on the ground. The Core Cities Group has been responsible largely for the turnaround in thinking about cities as positive solutions to the economy, to climate change uh, and to inclusion. We're talking here very much about the three-legged stool of regeneration, which includes the uh, built and natural environment and how we deal with that, uh, economic development and social development. I think it's important to point out that they all take place within a fourth dimension uh, of culture. I just want to knock on the head immediately the idea of, of cu culture as any, being anything kind of elitist or arty or for other people. It's not. It's what we're about. It's what we do every day of our lives. And culture has many, many definitions, but the broadest is the range of factors that combine to form the way in which we live in a social, environmental, emotional and spiritual way. But I also want to point out a difference between superficial approaches to creativity within cities and more embedded uh, approaches. And superficial creativity, in shorthand, would exist in iconic projects that are not connected to the locality or to its people and that would be the city that says we've got to have our angel of the west or dare I say angel of the, uh, angel of the east. So embedded creativity might be characterised by putting citizens in the driving seat, uh, nourishing a plurality of voices within that place, using association and metaphor, thinking about your scheme, your project or your issue through other people's eyes. What, what does this place look, look like through the eyes of minority groups, for, uh, of women, of children? It can really help you to reframe the way in which you think about things. Above all, seeing cities and indeed growth areas, not mechanically, not as machines that need to be fixed or simply reproduced, but organically as complex living cultural systems and making a commitment to that uh, for the longer term. What I have seen over the past 10 or 15 years is some result, and, and this result, as a result of thinking, you know, of being placed in between these two ideas of the Barcelona integrated city and the big flagship project, what I have seen is especially socially, economically divided cities. Why? Because the big flagship projects are, tend, to be, tend to be developed in the town centers. If you concentrate all the development in the town centre, the risk is the fringes, the places, the neighbourhoods outside the town, the town centre are left behind without bringing your community with you, without raising the quality of life among your community, then you couldn't have a competitive city. Franco Bianchini, a colleague of mine, has defined cultural planning as a culturally sensitive approach to urban development and you could say regeneration and, and place shaping. A culturally sensitive approach to place shaping. It, it would mean really looking at the landscape, looking at the urban texture, looking at patterns of behavior, lifestyles, looking at current dynamics, looking at the history of the economy of this place, looking also at the opportunities the economy is offering to this place. All of these will be all this would be a cultural analysis of the place. So you can understand that this goes well beyond your SWOT analysis. But a kind of cultural mapping of a place goes slightly deeper, and it starts off from the perspective of saying, we are now self-consciously going to map out the positives of this place. We are self-consciously going to write up what we think are the specific distinctive resources of this place. And you begin to form in your mind uh, an idea about that place, which invariably is completely different than the idea that people have, that have called you in have given of the place. The process of building cities or place shaping today has become so institutionalized. Local people seldom have an outlet would put their intuition to use.
So you see, you go into development, you go into place shaping from a different perspective. That perspective allows you to be more creative in the way you consider <coughs> policies, you consider projects in various fields of local development, from health to education, housing, economic development, and tourism. Cultural planning, therefore, I see it as a method of, of place shaping. I see it as a tool in the battery that civic leaders, communities alike can use when coming to, when tasked with looking at how a place can develop. Another characteristic of cultural planning is that it requires a, level, a certain level of joined up thinking. At the lower level here is that you have your community's needs, expectations, aspirations, and you, you, you identify your stakeholders at that level of needs, aspiration, and expectation, and you bring that kind of stakeholders up to you, you, you bring them from below up to the key stakeholders. And the joined up thinking happens at this level, up and down, in this kind of dual relationship between the key stakeholders, the decision makers, the, the key policy makers, and the needs and, and, and the community down there. The principle here is map, think about the distinctiveness, connect your resources in a strategic way to potential ideas, and, then, and try them out. We've started off with the sort of strategic and the global and we're funneling down to neighbourhood level. So I've been asked to uh, talk about the application of this model at neighbourhood level. But I suppose more to get some distance so that we're looking at the application of this model um, in a different place, in a different space. And that sometimes gives you the, the perspective to start looking at how it might work here. We've heard that uh, cultural planning is not about the arts, arts development, arts and regeneration, it's not cultural policy, it's not commission artworks or sculptures or any of that sort of thing. But I do believe that cultural the artist has a really strong role to play in cultural planning. Artists understand the power of symbolism and synthesis. They understand how we can break boundaries and cross sectors. Artists really know how to tell stories, uncover distinctiveness and tell the stories of places. Artworks, interventions, installations and productions can be a very um, rich source for engaging people in processes. So our definition of culture, and I've drawn this from um, uh, Leah's definition, it's not about the planning of culture, but a culturally sensitive approach to planning and policy. While cultural policies have a sectoral focus, like the arts, cultural planning adopts the broader definition of culture as a way of life and has a wider developmental remit. Our starting point at Fable Vision is looking at the resources of an area or, or a community of interest, not the problems. And some of the projects that we've been involved with, I'll just describe so that we, we sort of get an idea of how it can be applied, rather than looking at young people with different ethnicities and uh, religious beliefs as problems. Let's look at what they bring, a, a cultural planning approach to looking at safe communities, young people perpetrating antisocial anti behaviour seen as a problem, and artists went out into the streets uh, worked with those young people. It was in collaboration with the community wardens and the police. Um, uh, trans uh, helped them learn about uh, camera work and film skills. They started interviewing each other, then interviewing the local residents. They became the researchers, the sort of co community planning researchers for their area. And they yeah. identified the resources in their area. And then we had a big film uh, a showing in one of their hangout spaces around the back of the co-op car park. Lint House had uh, uh, the, the shipbuilding industry in decline and the Clyde Tunnel cut a swathe through the whole community, dividing it into two. The artists worked with local people and schools and community organisations and they uh, envisioned the sorts of shops that they would like to see in the area and what sort of facilities that they would like to see. One of the first things that we addressed was uh, the name of, of the place and we, 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 we transformed Lint House into Lint House Urban Village um, and love 
and people started to uh, talk about living and love and being in love. And, and now when you come out of the Clyde Tunnel, there's a, a big gable end of welcome to love. <laughs> it's not like place marketing uh, slapped on. It's like people start to feel it and believe it. So these processes grow and, and s inspire new cultural social enterprises that spring out of them as sort of organic growth. Um, leading to jobs and training and employment in the area which is desperately needed. Um, it's all very well grassroots initiatives but unless it's supported at the very top, uh, at city level and uh, unless it's, it's uh, uh, supported from the top, um, it's not going to work. On your tables you will find a scenario called Scenario for Cultural Mapping and it's about a place, an imaginary place called Romany Woods and the task will be to look for not the problems but the resources in Romany Woods and to start creating your own cultural planning projects. We started to map the area, uh, we looked at the green spaces, the people. One of the most useful resources was actually the people. The pumping station and the disused railway, um, the community centre and alternative education centre, the schools, uh, the volunteers and professionals, the families and the businesses within the area. From all of that, as I'm sure you all did, we looked at themes and the key themes in the community we felt were inventiveness and activity and social enterprise. We were very interested in in the connections and routes, a cycle route, allotments, gardens. Utilising green spaces and uh, keeping, maintaining a local identity. How do we actually engage people, the people that live here, and then bring in all the agencies? What you have to do is to create public spaces that move people, and if you do, then they'll take care of them. Revitalise the shopping centre with community enterprises, which we were going to call Make Do Limited. Try and get funding and try and learn from other people's um, expertise. Go and look for some examples of best practice and possibly twin ourselves with somewhere else that was doing something very similar. A best practice example of um, ecological environmental building. We're going to have a documentary project run by some of the young people. Pretty much everything that we came up with, I think, came from grassroots, though we did need some um, organisations to lead us in various things. What looks like complex method of addressing social and economic issues is in fact when you drill down to it quite simple. And now that I know it's cultural planning it's sort of I feel a bit more confident about putting it into practice. Identifying resources and thinking of things in a different way. I'd like the process to be more led by imagination. It's making use of the resources that are already there. Getting as many opinions as you can, you're much more likely to have a successful outcome. It's good to get everyone talking. Put a name to it after today, and I think that gives it more power, and, um, and so it's more likely to become a reality. But I think it's, it's sort of, it is going on already in lots of sort of small ways, and it's a question of bringing it together and, I'd say, giving it the label to give it some um, legitimacy, really. Yeah. This could really impact on, on people's quality of life. Yeah.